All right, brothers, welcome back to another video. Today, we're checking out Exploring Warhammer 40k The Tau. We have not done anything about the Tau, and you know, this series is a nice little introduction, not too much information. So, yeah, we're gonna do this video, and in the future, I'll do a more in depth video on them. This should be interesting. I know absolutely nothing about the Tau. I accidentally mistake, mistake them. I mistook, mistook, mistook. I mistook them the other day for the Necrons by accident, which was kind of dumb, but I did fix my error in the video. But yeah, this should be interesting. I know nothing about it, man. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new, of course, and you can suggest any Warhammer content you guys would like. You have been showing a lot of support to the channel. So today, we're going to check out this video on the Tau. Let's go. The Tau, the Milky Way galaxy in Warhammer 40k, is a place where might often indeed does make right. The Imperium of Man believes that it is the only hope for the future of the galaxy. The Necrons and Eldar believe that they deserve to be back on the top of the food chain. And Tyranids continue to consume everything in their path, only because it is their nature. The setting is one often bereft of what you might consider the good guys. But the Tau were originally introduced to be exactly that. They were intended to be altruistic, idealistic, and overall likable. In other words, unlike any other species in 40k. The Tau were eventually altered to become an empire, still separate and unique among the other species, but also able to realistically fit in the grim dark future of 40k. Let's take a look at exactly what makes the Tau so unique, and how they fit into the Milky Way. The Tau began, like most species, as primitive hunter-gatherers on the planet Tau. This was likely around the 35th millennium as a fleet from the Adeptus Mechanicus discovered the planet Tau around this point, finding the aliens there to be a primitive people that had only recently mastered fire. The Imperium planned to wipe out the fledgling species before they could develop further, but a warp storm broke out around the planet. The Tau themselves are practically immune to the effects of chaos, but the Imperium wrote them off as being lost to chaos, and moved on to other conflicts forgetting about the Tau. The Tau population was split up into various tribes, and these tribes began evolving and learning in different ways. Some began developing agriculture and metallurgy, while others became far more proficient hunters. Trading developed between the tribes, but as civilizations grow, conflict eventually breaks out. Those tribes without farms and cities went to war against those that did, and so in defense they built walls and fortresses along with discovering how to create crude firearms. Thousands died during this period, now referred to by the Tau as the Terror, or Death Age. Things looked dire for the Tau, and if things had continued as they were, they could have easily wiped out their own species. Mm. According to Tau legend, however, something rather miraculous occurred. A Tau of unusual appearance walked into the camp of the besiegers, and convinced the leader that it was necessary to parley for peace. A similar Tau made his way into the fortress, and convinced their leader of the same. Within a few hours, the Tau of both sides had gathered to talk. Strange newcomers referred to themselves as ethereals, and explained that the different talents of all the tribes were useful, and the Tau needed to work together in order to achieve the greater good. The greater good is the core philosophy that the Tau Empire is built on, it's funny how all of these uh, places like Krieg just have a civil war going on, you know, just, yep, let's just fight each other. At least these guys sorted it out before they uh, decided to nuke their own planet, but you know, that's fine. A guiding principle of unification, both of the Tau themselves and of every other species in the galaxy. The two ethereals quickly united the two warring factions, and other ethereals had appeared to a number of other tribes soon uniting the entire species. The Tau now united under a caste system, consisting of five different groups. A Tau's caste is chosen at birth, and inherited from one's parents, and each member of a caste possesses a slightly different physiology from another caste. For a Tau to later attempt to change their own caste would be considered contrary to the greater good. I was gonna say heresy, well, you know. The fire caste comprises the bulk of the Tau military. Fire Tau are taller and more muscular than other Tau, and are generally trained from birth to be soldiers. Hmm. The earth caste is composed of laborers, artisans, and scientists, and they are responsible for most of the technological leaps in the Tau Empire. 
The water caste consists of diplomats and merchants, often serving as ambassadors to other worlds, or handling diplomatic relationships between different castes. The air caste is primarily responsible for handling the Tau Navy, piloting their spaceships and coordinating their fleets. Mm. Members of the air caste refuse to land on planets themselves, as their skeletons have atrophied due to their lives spent in low gravity. Finally, the fifth caste are the ethereals themselves, who rule over the other Tau with a totalitarian obedience. Most Tau would never refuse any request from an ethereal, and their origins are shrouded in legend among the Tau. It is due to the ethereals that the Tau developed from a primitive species so quickly, and indeed, many Tau perceive the Ethereals as deities. So where did the, <clears throat> where did the Ethereals come from then? They're the same species, but they're a little different. So did they just evolve quicker? Like what? The leader of the Ethereals, known as the Ethereal Supreme, rules over the entire empire. Mm -hmm. With the Ethereals in charge and the Tau population working in harmony, they experienced a period of rapid technological growth. This would then lead into what was called the First Sphere of Expansion, during which the Tau took to the stars and spread outwards from their home planet. With them, the Tau took along their philosophy of the greater good in an effort to unify every intelligent species they came across. Civilizations would be diplomatically encouraged to join the Tau Empire, where they could retain their own cultures and beliefs as long as they adhered to the overall unifying philosophy of the greater good. Lightspeed travel was still a bit of a mystery for the Tau, and in fact their rapid population growth and expansion was only slowed due to the fact that crossing the distance of the expanded Tau Empire was impossible within a single lifetime. The Tau encountered the Orcs for the first time during this period, and although they first sent ambassadors to negotiate with them, they changed their minds after mm. the orcs slaughtered the ambassadors. Who did you? <laughs> That's not the way to go about meeting orcs, ladies and gentlemen. There is no talking to orcs. There's probably no talking to orcs. Unless, unless, you know, there's like so many tyrannids that you need their help and then they need your help, you know, maybe. But I doubt they'd ever help you, let's be honest. Of course they killed your ambassadors. Of course they did. The second sphere of expansion began after the Tau discovered a breakthrough in light speed travel, allowing them to much more quickly traverse the stars. They also gained a significant alliance with an alien species called the Krut, the Krut. after saving their homeworld from the orcs. The second sphere of expansion saw even more species brought into the Tau's fold, as well as a number of planets liberated from the orcs. The Tau eventually crossed through the Damocles Gulf an expanse of empty space that isolated the Tau from the Imperium of Mankind. The Tau's first encounters with humanity were with pirates, rogue traders, and planets on the most distant fringes of the Imperium. The fire cast called for a conquest to claim these planets, but the Ethereals knew that would quickly lead to a battle they couldn't possibly win. Instead, the water cast was sent in to quietly and slowly integrate themselves with these distant planets. Trading commenced with alien goods flowing into these planets in direct violation of Imperium laws. I was about to say, we found out that you're not allowed to trade with aliens in the uh, in the last video we watched from Exploring Warhammer the Inquisition. So these guys are heretics, boys. They got their, you know, <laughs> their planets probably got destroyed, let's be honest. And slowly but surely, these planets separated themselves from the Imperium. When the rest of the Imperium heard of this, they launched the Damocles Crusade in an effort to exterminate the Tau. Although the Tau armies proved themselves quite capable, more capable than the Imperium had expected, they were still beaten back across the Damocles Gulf. The Imperium was held in check on the Tau world of Dalith, where both sides suffered heavy losses. Eventually, the water cast attempted to negotiate for temporary peace, which the Imperium accepted, primarily due to the impending approach of a Tyranid Hive fleet elsewhere. The aftermath of the short war with the Imperium left the Tau Empire rattled with self-doubts about the scope of the galaxy and the threats they've encountered. You can't have self-doubt. That inspires chaos. You can't do that. I mean, to be fair, you're fighting against the biggest force. I mean, you're there new. They didn't have that much uh, thingy. They're relatively new, like, technologically, because humans 
found them when they were basically in their stone age, right? So yeah, yeah, of course they were gonna get their asses kicked by the space marines and shit like that, bro. This could have easily festered and led to the collapse of the empire. Mm. And so the Ethereals quickly initiated an expedition in order to reclaim their lost territory. Unfortunately, this led to another war for survival. Orcs. This time against a staggeringly massive fleet of orcs. Not good. The Ethereals united the entire Tau Empire in order to survive, eventually beating back the Greenskins after a dozen years. Thanks to the rampant development of new technologies during wartime, the Tau were ready once again to launch another sphere of expansion, this time over much greater distances than before. Why is there just a plane, dude? What the hell? They again crossed the Damocles Gulf into Imperial space, conquering a number of planets, both peacefully and violently. The further they advanced into Imperium space, however, the greater the resistance they encountered. Eventually, of course, the Imperium stopped the Tau expansion, but the Tau had proven themselves to be capable opponents. The Tau, however, were now in a difficult spot for their continued goal of unifying the galaxy. The Imperium had proven to be a thorn in their sides. The Tyranids had consumed great swaths of planets. The Necrons had popped up, making things even more difficult and the Great Rift broke out across the Milky Way, dividing much of the galaxy. After years of studying Imperial faster-than-light technology, the Tau had created a new spaceship module that would allow them to move across space at incredible speed. A fourth sphere of expansion was then initiated, with the plan to send a fleet of ships to a region where they could continue expanding. Unfortunately, disaster struck when the fleet gathered and activated thousands of the modules at once, creating a tear in reality mm -mm. that sent the entire fleet into the warp. The Tau had had very little dealings with the warp, and so the entire incident was swept under the rug by the rest of the Tau. Oh, you know what happened to those guys, bro. Oh, they got eaten, bro. They are all dealt gone. It turned out that only three-fourths of the fleet was destroyed in the warp, oh. however, with the rest being saved by a many-armed entity some believe to be a chaos god created as an echo of the Tau. Mm. The remainder of the fleet emerged deep in Imperium space, on the other end of a wormhole. Drones were sent back through the wormhole to re-establish communication, but the survivors of the fourth expansion would continue to have a dark reputation due to their exposure to the warp. The fifth sphere of expansion began shortly after the rediscovery of the fourth sphere fleet, You'd think these guys would have given up by now. They've literally been shut on every single time, and, you know, they're like, oh, let's go again. Using the wormhole to send another fleet through. Mm -hmm. This is the current phase of Tau expansion, and so far they have been embattled against the forces of Chaos, Orcs, Tyranids, Necrons, and Mankind. Tau technology is undoubtedly advanced by 40k standards, and continues to develop rapidly. The Tau overall lack combat proficiency in close quarters, compared to others such as orcs or space marines, and so most of their weapon technology is based around ranged combat. Their standard issue pulse rifles are generally considered superior to the standard weaponry of most other species, and their rail rifles are easily capable of firing a projectile through space marine terminator armor. Hmm. The Tau also often deploy mobile gun drones, possessing their So they are good at long, mid to long range combat because of their pulse weapons, right? Because they're better than standard LAS guns, right? But they have zero proficiency in close combat because they don't carry, it doesn't look like they carry melee weapons. That's so deep because the orcs, right? You can shoot them all day long. They're just going to keep charging through and eventually some of them are going to start coming through and then they're going to start whooping you, bro. At close range same with space marines bro like we watched a video about melee from arch warhammer and obviously the space marines have a much better chance at killing you if they're right in your face and with these guys that that probability is amplified their own limited intelligence which swoop in on an enemy target and unload with twin linked pulse carbines hmm. most notable among tau war gear however are their battle suits mechanized suits of armor with the offensive capabilities of a tank and the speed and resilience to withstand heavy fire. Battle suits are worn into combat by the greatest heroes of the fire cast and are capable of efficiently dealing with both infantry and vehicles. Mm. Armed with jetpacks, target acquisition systems, shield generators, 
advanced sensors and weaponry rivaling that of other species battle tanks, a Tau fire warrior in a battle suit is a force to be reckoned with. It's believed, at least by imperial scholars, that the ethereals managed to display such control over the Tau and other species through the use of pheromones produced by the ethereals themselves. These chemicals would make others far more open to suggestion which, combined with the overall philosophy of the greater good, leads to a sort of indoctrination. Mm. This again is more or less a conspiracy theory, but it'd be foolish to assume that the Tau are as good as they'd like others to believe. Overall, the Tau are a rather young, somewhat naive species, largely unaware of the dangers of the warp, or of developing artificial intelligence. They are proving themselves, however, to be capable combatants, making their own mark in the Milky Way despite their lofty goals of unification and their willingness to negotiate with other species though they've earned more than their fair share of enemies so this battle armor is it better than space marine armor or because they said it's like a tank but space marine armor is insane and obviously humans are more advanced in this universe but yeah the tau team might be some fellows you know like i feel like they could just make an agreement with the imperium but then they don't think that's great or good right it would be kind of funny if they are indoctrinated by the, uh, the guy that they're talking about. Out of universe, the tower were developed for largely two reasons. <laughs> One was... Do. Oh no, my mind got split in half. Was ...to have a more positive species for some fans to rally around. And two, to have a much more science fiction inspired species. With battle suits and artificial intelligences rather than the science fantasy flavor most of 40k has. While the first aspect has been slowly altered over the years to make the Tau slightly more insidious than at first glance, the second aspect has only continued to develop. The Tau are certainly not everyone's cup of tea, standing somewhat apart from other main species of 40k, mm. but they nonetheless have their fans, and aren't going anywhere soon. We was get caught. Aye, aye, aye. This is a long one. Stranger, I bid you greetings. In the name of the Tau, if you are reading this, then you will have encountered one of our messenger messengers drones that are therefore a space faring race. Soon you will see more evidence of us. This is no cause for alarm. When you encounter one of our ships or outposts, then welcome it. We have much to offer a faithful friend. We are five casts, one people. The earth cast, build and manufacture the, the air cast, pilot and navigate the water cast, liaise and arbitrate. Fuck me. The fire cast guard our holdings and defeat our enemies, all bound to the dream of bringing a new way to the universe. I hope you will choose to share the culture, technology and protection of the Tau Empire. <laughs> the one constant in the universe is change, the wise adapt, believe in our destiny. What does that say at the bottom? Transcript from alien probe discovered in the Koth system. Okay. Anyway. Thank you all for watching that video man, the Tau, we had never done any content on them before, I'm sure we could find videos that go more in race and I see one from Luton right now that's down there that's 57 minutes long so we'll definitely in the future go into more detail about these guys man they're very interesting obviously a bit naive because they want to bring great or good you know what I mean they, they they haven't discovered AI haven't had any battles with chaos you'd assume they'd eventually go into some kind of dark times right where they have to deal with that like humans did but yeah all in all good video man nice introduction probably didn't go too in depth but well, that's fine, man. Thank you all for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. And yeah, I'll see you all next time.